Well, can you see the problem? I've got cut worms. Well, I have some healthy brassicas. And right next to them, I have brassicas that are gone. Yeah. Good one. Healthy. 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 And gone. And this one down here has just failed to thrive. I don't know why. But, uh... This has not been a healthy plant for me. So we're going to replace this one. We're going to replace that one right there. And hopefully we will have some stronger plants here to fend off and ward off the cutworms. I think they're cutworms. And here's why. This is very typical damage from a cutworm. They will come up and try to cut off an entire stem and they'll feed off the juices that come out of that stem. But uh, this stem here is probably thick enough to avoid damage. They tend to go for very young plants, seedlings, and uh, compromised stems. So. Cut worms. Yeah, cut worms are caterpillars. They are the larva of a night uh, nocturnal moth. And you probably won't see them. You probably won't see the moth. They're busy when you're asleep. And you'll come out and you'll find that your entire... A uh, bunch of seedlings that you just transplanted got cut down. That's why they call them cutworms. Those little larvae wrap around the base of your stems, of the tender little stems of your seedlings, or the tenderest of stems of the leaves on your seedlings, and they just munch away and cut it down, and they consume your plants. So, uh, well, I've got a cutworm problem. The main way I'm going to deal with it is replacement. I'm going to put in replacement plants. I'm going to put in some plants that are a little bit more mature, a little bit tougher, and I think those plants will withstand the cutworms a little bit better. So let's get to replacing. And then I'm going to show you some ways to deal with cutworms if you don't want to do the replacement method. Let's go. I went to the store to get some replacement plants. These are bonnie plants. I've got some broccoli and cauliflower here. And uh, these stems are woody enough and tough enough now. I think they will resist any kind of cutworm. That one might be suspect. But... Uh, yeah, these are a little bit better, so we're going to do some replacing. This guy looks a little compromised as well. We might as well replace it. Look at that. Man, good heavens. Two leaves on that plant are not enough to keep this one going, so we're going to replace this one too. So we'll take this poor fella out, get us a little hole going. Get these leaves out of the way. About the size of the pot. All right. We're gonna put in this cauliflower right here. Make sure I mark it. I bought these Bonnie plants as backups, as replacements, and I'm glad I did. We need them. All right. Plug it right in there and surround it with the soil. All right, well, this was cauliflower, and you can see there's nothing left of the plant. Not even a, not even a stem. So whatever came through here nipped this off at the bud, at, at, at the stem. And that's kind of the sign that you've got a problem with cutworms. Yeah. So we're going to take this out. I got some broccoli here. I have some cauliflower too, but we're going to put broccoli here instead. See if that makes any difference. I don't think it will. All right, roots are circling a bit, so we'll just kind of break them up loosely. I don't want to break too much off. I got two plants in here, and I selected two plants specifically. You'll find that. Um, when you buy plants at the store that oftentimes you will have two plants in the same pot that's just added insurance because if one plant get cut, gets cut down by the uh, the caterpillars or any other pest you've got another one that uh, might make it so we've got two plants here 
we will have to thin them out. We will have to select one. One of these plants will be the stronger of the two and we'll select that at, at a certain point in the future. All right, so we've got a replacement there. All right, that's good. Got my label in, broccoli. All right, we got one more to replace. One more backup. When you encounter cutworms, you have found a pest that is the larva of a moth. And the caterpillar um, only comes out at night. It lives in the soil and they come out at night. They wrap around the base of your plant, usually the, the youngest of plants. And as their name suggests, they cut the plant off at the ground or they cut off leaves of it. And you can come out after planting some seedlings and find that your entire garden bed has uh, disappeared. All that's left are little twigs. I find that it usually uh, uh, um, attacks my pepper seedlings and that's real frustrating. Um, so cutworms, you can find them out at night if you go out and uh, take a flashlight with you. Uh, the moth, it only flies at night. So yeah, they live in the soil around your plants and they come and they cut off your seedlings and feed off of those. So there are three ways you can deal with cutworms that I'm going to cover today. And uh, the first one is just replace your plant with a, a, a tougher plant. That's what I've chose to, chosen to do, but I'll show you three other ways that uh, you can deal with cutworms. Hi, what are you doing? Phoebe. So of the three ways that you can attack these cutworms, the first one is with Thuricide Bt. This is an organic, bacterial-based insecticide, and it attacks all kinds of caterpillars and soft-bodied insect larvae, and it's really good stuff. Um, I knocked out all the skeletonizer larvae that were on my grapevines with one application of Bt. So what you would do is you would just take this, spray your plants when you put them in, and what's going to happen is if those cutworms come out, they're going to start eating and munching, and you might lose your first round, but uh, this will kill them and you won't have to deal with them on a second round. Um, or if you've got some more sturdy plants, this will kill them and your plant should survive. But again, the, the, the caterpillars still have to bite your plant and ingest the Bt in order to die. So might not be the best method. I've seen people exclude the caterpillar. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to take a toilet paper roll or you could curl up some paper and put a collar around the base of your plant and that when those caterpillars come out of the soil and uh, come up to your plant, well, this will exclude them. Now, if they're really smart caterpillars, they'll crawl up over and go inside, but um, not necessarily. Um, we're gonna show you how to exclude them. <clears throat> Another way I've seen people do it is to take wood ash. I've got in here some, some ash from some hardwood and you can spread this around the base of your plant and that is said to deter your, uh, the caterpillars from crawling up to your plant. I don't know if it's true. David the Good used this method down in the, in the tropics. And well, we're gonna try it, we'll see if it works. Okay, so I have a toilet paper roll and I'm just gonna split it down the middle with my dull knife. All right, I don't need all of that, so I'm gonna cut it this way. Should have done this first. We have our collar here, and we can take our collar and literally wrap it around the base of our plant just like so. And you want to squeeze it together and then shove it down into the soil so that it stays put. That forms a barrier, and when the cutworm comes, he's probably living under here somewhere. When the cutworm comes, there's a barrier, and he's not likely to crawl up this thing and get your plant. So there's one way to exclude the cutworms. And I can see that on this replacement plant that I planted just a couple days ago, I've already got cutworm damage. He's already attacked the base of my plants, knocked off a couple of leaves here. So we're gonna leave this here and see if this plant can't survive. So if your plant is nice and sturdy and tough like this one is, the cutworm can't get the entire stem. It's too thick for him. He'll go for the smaller stems like these uh, leaves and stuff. And you can see the damage there. They just, they just cut right through. Yeah, not encouraging. So this collar should protect these two plants here and we'll select the stronger of these two broccoli plants. I think these are broccoli. And uh, let's see, yeah, these are broccoli. And we'll let that one grow up to fruition there. All right, let's spread some ashes. 
perhaps you can see on this plant that these leaves have been damaged and it's a strong cut there's a strong cut at the base of the leaf there's a strong cut around the stem here of this leaf and this stem has been cut off as well this is the work of the cutworm so what we're going to try on this one is i'm going to take my ashes this is wood ash and i'm just going to spread it around the bottom of this plant this ash is wet but it will still do the job and so the thinking is that ash being basically a byproduct of burning is carbon heavy and rather sharp and for the caterpillar he doesn't want to walk through all that stuff to get to his meal so hopefully this will deter any further cutworm damage ash so there we go we're going to physically exclude cutworms from the base of our plant with toilet paper tubes you could use curled up paper whatever you got on hand so that should work we'll see and we're going to see how the ashes do these cut worms can be really frustrating when you plant your new plants or you plant seedlings and the seedlings start to sprout and you think wow i've got all my seedlings are coming up and then you come out the next morning and they're all gone that's cut worms. They can be a, a, a real discouragement. So let's just recap. The way to deal with cut worms is to uh, physically exclude them. You can do that with a, a paper barrier, a tube, paper, toilet paper roll. You can physically exclude them with ashes. You could use, I guess, diatomaceous earth. I don't like diatomaceous earth because it also affects beneficial uh, organisms in your soil. So I try to avoid diatomaceous earth, but it will work too. It's like laying a field of, gra uh, of broken glass around your plant. Those caterpillars won't like that, and they'll be discouraged. You can also use BT. Uh, the bacterial insecticide is a good option for chewing and caterpillars, chewing insects and caterpillars. But they have to chew first in order to die, so you'll probably lose your first round. So what I what I think is the best practice is try to raise your seedlings indoors and in trays get them nice and strong where their their main stem is nice and thick where if you get uh, cut worms they're going to attack the the more tender smaller branches of the leaves and that way if you put your heavy um, stemmed transplants in you can spray those with bt right off the bat and whenever those cut worms come out they're going to die off when they take their first bites of your of your plant so you, you got a better a better chance of success. Uh, cutworms generally attack pepper plants and um, there's the cabbage cutworm. It attacks cabbages and brassicas. That's what I'm dealing with here. Uh, I'm kind of surprised I've had cutworm problems this late in the season, but hey, that's gardening. So, well, there you go. No matter what kind of gardening you do, eventually you're going to come up with a pest problem and you're not going to know what to do. Sometimes the thing to do is just keep starting over until you overcome them. And with these caterpillars that are called, uh, you know, like cabbage cutworms or any kind of cutworm, sometimes the best thing to do is just raise your plants up to be a little bit thicker, a little bit tougher, and they can overcome those cutworms. That's what we're trying here today, some replacements, and hopefully it works. Hey, happy gardening to you. Follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Phoebe, what are you doing? Huh? Are there people? Are there people here? Did your people come to see you? It's people. <laughs> hey Dallas, how you doing? Good, and you? I'm well. How's your channel going? Going well, Phoebe's glad to see you. Mm-hmm. Well, she practiced while you <laughs> Yeah, she'll, she'll go around her, totally. Drop. Drop. <laughs> brush your hand over that plant right there that big bushy one right there no brush your hand through them smell your hand mm, it's a good smell huh? that's a good smell <laughs> yeah i can smell it from here that's rosemary rosemary, rosemary. Yep. that's what you put on that food that's right so weird.
Oh, and you dropped it. 